So the, the title of my talk is prediction of crack of the crack propagation direction in missions with time varying multi-action loading. Um, the contents are first I will just uh, introduce the uh, the basic algorithms so we're using track base 3D. Track base 3D is the uh, software we are using at NTU and which we developed at NTU for automatic cyclic track propagation calculations in our components. Then um, I will talk about mission track propagation for angle criteria. I will introduce you to the tests which have been performed, which include tension torsion specimen tests and uh, cruciform specimen tests, and it will lend to some uh, conclusions. Okay, track base 3D, um, it is a, a general purpose um, track propagation program uh, based on elastic, uh, linear elastic calculation. So using the K-factor concept, uh, the structure of the program is, is similar to other software you probably know. There's a preprocessor in which the uh, actual track is being inserted into the mesh, the uncracked mesh. So there's a remeshing being performed with a focused hexahedral element at the crack tip and a filling of the remaining domain with tetrahedral elements. After that, a finite element calculation being done, linear elastic, finite element calculation leading to stresses which are being used in a post processing step to determine the K values, K1, K2, K3. From this, A, from this, A, um, written K factor is being determined. The crack propagation direction is determined, and using a standard crack propagation law, the crack propagation increment is calculated. So um, here you see the uh, typical mesh how this uh, looks like with the uh, focused, the uh, focused uh, mesh extensor mesh. Crack propagation law is a standard law. Um, it's uh, indicated here. Um, so, Harris law modified with a term for the uh, R influence for the threshold and for the critical range. Uh, on the upper right, you see the figure explaining the angles which are important here. The angle phi is the, uh, the deflection angle, which are basically interested in the angle psi, which is also calculated as a twist or a torsion angle, which we do not actually use for the moment because this would lead to a discontinuous track shape. Okay, what now we are really interested in missions. Um, if you have just one loading point and you stop loading, you're looking up the temperature, you can calculate your K factors in one loading point, you can calculate the uh, deflection angle and then you go to the K factor. However, we have a uh, flight missions and then you would make uh, engine um, engines for aircraft. So the you know, flight of an aircraft, we have different conditions for temperature, temperature is changing all the time, the loading is changing and not in phase, so there's also out of phase influences. And we have the basic question here is each of these loading steps leads to a specific crack propagation direction. Now, what is the crack propagation direction of the complete mission? So how do we derive from let's say the N um the deflection angles for the end data points, how do we get one angle for the complete mission? And uh, here you see two different uh, representations. On the, on the left, you see representation how the K factor, which in this case would be the equivalent K factor, uh, changes over time. Of course, also the temperature changes over time. On the right hand side, there's an alternative representation in which from the K factor, we calculate A, B, A, B. EADN star. So we calculate the crack propagation rate. Why do we do that? Um, we do that because the temperature is changing all the time. So if you're just looking at the K factor, then you don't really include this temperature influence. A cycle with a low K at a very high temperature may be more damaging than a cycle with a high K and a low temperature. Therefore, we try to include the effect of temperature by looking at the ADN star which in the positive range includes the Paris part and threshold in the negative range, just the Paris part. So again, here are the basic assumptions. Um, for mixed mode missions, we use a K equivalent. 
Uh, we do not use contact, so uh, the faces of the, of the track, they can't intersect. So we, we uh, treat also negative K values, and the K equivalent is actually K to be negative if the K1 factor is negative. So the K equivalent inherits the sign of the, uh, the K1, and the same applies for the A star, it inherits the sign of the um, of K1. Therefore, we also get the negative values here for the A and star. So um, here in, on, on the right, you can identify a maximum and a minimum, which we recall as max and as min, and which will play an important role in what I will be talking about in the next slides. Now, you can imagine different criteria. I mean, there are probably much more, many more criteria, but these are the criteria we looked at. So one cost of criteria is that you say, okay, uh, I have different uh, angles for each of those limit points, and the angle of the mission is at a kind of mean, a weight mean for the weight to pay the ATN or the ATN star. The second criterion is an X max criterion, in which you say, here, uh, I'm having this as max point, there's max loading step, and this is the dominant step, which means that uh, the angle for the mission, the deflection angle of the mission, is assumed to be the deflection angle of this dominant step. The third criterion, there, the as min as max criterion, um, it, uh, in this case, we extract the dominant cycle, so not the dominant step, but the dominant cycle consisting of as max and as min. You look at the stress fields, as some public stress fields for these two steps to subtract them, and based on the difference, you have laid the reflection angle, and you're saying the reflection angle of this dominant cycle is the reflection angle of the mission. And fourth criteria actually combines criteria two and three, in which you say if the mission is completely in the positive range, so the R value is bigger than or equal to zero, we take the dominant step criterion. Whereas if we have a mission in which also negative values occur, so which also pressure occurs, we take the dominant cycle criteria. So now I will look into these uh, different criteria for um, we we'll look into these different criteria for the specimen tests uh, which were performed. Tension torsion tests were performed at the University of Rostock um, a couple of years ago. The specimen here is quite cylindrical. It's just a plate notched on one side. Uh, the um, loading is a tension at an R value of zero and an R value of minus one. And the torsion is at R minus one. So the torsion is cyclic. The tension depends on, depends on the test itself. Is either r equal to zero or r equal to minus one. Um, between the tension and the torsion, there is also a phase shift which takes values zero, four to nine. So, total of 18 tests have to be performed. Now, here you see the results for, um, for one of the following tests. Here you see uh, the, the, uh, the criteria in which you try to measure. Uh, the difference between the, the test and the numerical prediction. So we, these are the 18 tests which have been performed uh, at different R values, R actual, R torsion, and so on. Now, um, for each of these tests have been um, simulated numerically, and of course we need kind of a, a measure to, um, to uh, compare the numerical results with the test results, and for this purpose, actually, the volume in between the numerical prediction, which is screened here, and the test, which this triangulation has been calculated. Based on this, an actual difference in percent has been determined. Here, the one with last column is for the, uh, the dominant um, loading step, so dominant step criterion, whereas last column is for the average uh, criterion. And here you see that the dominant step criterion is usually better than the, the, than the uh, average angle criterion, except for tests in which the phase shift was 90 degrees. Now, we actually have to exclude tests with 90 degrees because they were not protected. I mean, for instance, for one case, we repeated one test three times, and we got three 
totally different surfaces for this phase shift of increase. So we uh, concentrated on the phase shift of zero at four degrees, either for r equal to zero in the actual direction or r equal to minus one. And in all those cases, we got a better result for the uh, on the criterion. Here we see comparison, the blue curves here are the uh, meat angle criterion, the red curves are the dominant stack criterion numerically, and the triangulation is again the test results. So we see that the red faces of red surfaces here um, are closer to the test results than the blue ones. But now, um, later on, we also looked at these results more closely. We did also some other criteria to compare the test with the numerical results. One of those criteria was to, uh, to look at the surface angle and to calculate like, the surface angle of both sides of the specimen. And doing that, we actually observed uh, the following. So here again, you get the test results. The green results here are the dominant step criteria. And this is the uh, deflection angle of delta here, going from uh, ranges from 25 to 55. And you see that into the tests, results themselves are here in dashed lines. So you see that the, the, the degree results of the set criteria is actually not too close to the uh, test results for actual R values uh, equal to zero. Um, and we looked at the, uh, at the K values and we noticed that these tests, um, these tests the, uh, the mission was partially in negative range, partially in positive range. Therefore, we we'll developed this uh, dominant cycle criterion as min as max, which are the blue curves here, and which we see are much closer to the, the test results. Actually, this as min as max criterion also seems to be used in the commercial software Frank 3D, which shows a similar behavior. So, from this analysis, we concluded that we should proceed with the dominant cycle criterion. Additional tests have been performed, cruciform tests um, that were performed at the University of Darmstadt. Uh, this here is the, uh, the specimen geometry. And um, the tests which were performed are such that in direction A, we apply a static loading. In direction B, we apply a cyclic loading. So the test here on the left is characterized by a large static load of 24 billion and a cyclic loading of A to the Newton. And we see that although cyclic uh, loading is really the loading leading to crack propagation, because cyclic is the cyclic propagation task, the crack itself uh, is oriented in the direction of torque to the static loading. To uh, look or analyze this further, we um, actually tested some other conditions in which the cyclic loading is almost the same, 16 to the plus minus, we start with a very low static loading. In that case, of course, you expect that the crack will grow according to the cyclic loading, so on top of direction B. And if the static load is now increasing, you see that additional cracks um, start, uh, not at the pre cracking, there was a pre cracking, but at the notch itself, additional cracks started uh, autogonal to the static loading. So we see kind of transition if the static loading is increasing from crack propagation according to the static loading to a crack propagation according to the static loading. Now, the, sec the secondary cracks were actually not expected and they were actually not really wanted. So we are looking into performing other tests and changing the geometry of the notch in order to try to avoid the existence of these secondary cracks. Now, with the analysis, if you analyze these tests, then you see that here for the, the test of the high static loading, that your mission, which in this case consists of three steps, uh, is characterized by K values and the ADM star values, which are completely the positive range. Whereas for the other tests, we have a mixture, uh, some tabs are in positive, some in negative range. The um, numerical prediction of the tests, the six tests we performed um, as latest, um, there the agreement is very, very good if you do not consider the secondary tracks. Which we were not able to model in our numerical software. So we modeled the primary cracks, and here you have a superposition of the crack direction in the test and the prediction, which uh, seems very good. Now, if you look at the first test, 
with the large static loading, the, the, the text result here is a yellow line. There you see that, for instance, the as many as max criteria, so the dominant cycle criteria in this case leads to crack propagation. It starts here, your top of here at the notch. So it doesn't match the numeric of the, the test result at all. However, if you if you change the criteria and say that if the mission is completely in the positive range, you stick to the dominant step criteria, then again you get a very, very good match. Okay, so the conclusions are that. Um, for missions in the negative and positive K range, the dominant cycle criterion performs best. Whereas if the mission is complete in the positive range, especially if the R values are always strictly positive, then the dominant step criterion performs better. Both can be summarized in the form of the min as min zero as max criterion, and the mean time criterion seems to be inferior to any of the of these criteria. Here is the overview of a couple of publications, the first two. Already published. The, the third one is still insufficient. Thank you very much for your attention.